Uh, I'm come from the Australian National University, and in today's talk, it's a great pleasure for me to share the results from my group related to the transmitter and the receiver modeling analysis and design in molecular communications. So um, here is the outline of the talk today. So in the beginning, I will give a brief introduction to molecular communications and its applications, and after that. I will first talk about the transmitter model that we considered in our works, which is the memory fusion based transmitter. And after that, I will talk about the receiver model that I would like to share with everyone, which is the absorbing receiver with heterogeneous receptors. And finally, I'll conclude the whole talk. Um, so for the molecular communications, I think according to the presentations that we have heard so far, in one of the, at least one of the, Previous seminars, it, uh, it was mentioned that the molecular communication would be play a very important role for us to support the emerging and you know cutting edge applications in six G and beyond era. For example, the Internet of Bionic Things. Well, I mean, given this is a molecular communication workshop, I believe that most of us should have known that molecular communication is an important communication par paradigm in nanoscale, in macro scale which help us to exchange and transmit information with the aid of propagation of molecules. So this is the basic mechanical uh, mechanism of molecular communications. I believe we all know that the transmitter sends molecules to the receiver and the molecules propagated in the environment and they are captured and, re and processed by the receivers. And in terms of applications, I, I can see that some of the previous talks have talked about the applications of molecular communications. We know that the molecular communications can be used to support the micro scale communication scenario, for example, in biology. So if we look at biology, for example, if we look at some like the environment within the human body, we know that the cells typically communicate with each other using the ligase. And in this case, the tachy cell must have the right receptor to, you know, to release and to catch up, to catch the, the, the molecules. And when uh, like that bound to its receptor, it triggers a change inside the target, target cell. And for example, it triggers the alteration in the activity of a gene or cell division. So here we give two examples about such applications. One is um, the, the synaptic signaling, one is the quorum sensing. And if we try to extend the scale a bit, we know that the molecular communication also help us to facilitate the communication in the Micro scale, and, and here when we talk about the micro scale, it's not you know as you know the large scale as that in the wireless communication systems. And typically, we talk about the communication range within centimeters to you know less than a meter. For example, if we look at the agriculture uh, industry or agriculture field, if we consider a damaged plant, we know that typically this damaged plant would release the volatile organic compounds. To reach the endemic plants nearby and give them the chance to strengthen their own defense system. And in this case, the plants can receive, uh, sorry, can release the isoflavones to attract bacteria and form neutralism. So in this case, uh, we can also know that if we can have sensors, I mean, to be deployed in this environment, it can help also help us to facilitate this communication paradigm and can help us to improve the well-being of plants and benefit. The agriculture industry. And apart from that, we also know that the molecular communications can be used in the healthcare to facilitate the healthcare industry, just as previously uh, as mentioned in the uh, in the in the just in the uh, previous presentation. For example, it can help us to deal with the disease diagnosis and also can help us to facilitate the disease treatment. And apart from that, the molecular communication can also help us to you know to achieve some outcomes in the environmental industry, for example, the water pollution control, as well as the detection of oils for just, for example, like inside, like within the soil or just underground. So we can see that this molecular communication has played, will play an important role um, in the future, you know, different kinds of industries. But of course, it needs us to, you know, to, to keep uh, generating the cutting edge innovations in this field. So for the molecular communications, if you look at the research challenges, we know that the physical components required for the communication uh, for molecular communication includes the transmitter, the receiver, and the real 
propagation mechanism. So in this case, if we try to design an end-to-end -end, uh, molecular communication system, we need to consider the effect of practical you know, transmitter in the communication system. We need to consider the reception mechanism and the receiver, and then we also need to model the propagation mechanism of information molecules, just as one of the previous uh, like presentations, which talks about the molecular, the molecule propagation in flow. So, um, but of course, we know that apart from this modeling, this design, we also need other, you know, kind of uh, like research in the molecular communications. But in this talk, I would like to share the results from my group, which focuses on the transmitter modeling and the receiver modeling with everyone. So in terms of the transmitter modeling and the receiver modeling, let's first look at the existing research that have been conducted in terms of a receiver transmitter and the receiver modeling. In terms of transmitter modeling, we have seen a few existing models. I believe that the in the very beginning, a lot of researchers, including myself, have considered a point transmitter. So for the point transmitter, we know that we just consider the transmitter as a point, which you know has a very small volume, which can be ignored compared to other, you know, the, the propagation environment. And for this point transmitter, the information molecules are, produ are produced by the transmitter instantaneously. And once these molecules are produced, they, the, the molecules enter the propagation environment immediately. So that is the assumption behind the point transmitter. And apart from that, we um, some researchers have started to consider the volume transmitter. So the trans for the volume transmitter, the key feature that has been considered is to consider the transmitter's geometry. And typ the typically people would assume that the molecules are initially distributed over the transmitter volume and the molecules are generated instantaneously and the transmitter membrane is you know, somehow kind of transparent, which means that there's no interaction between the release molecules and the transmitter itself. And apart from that, some other researchers have considered the transmitter with controlled molecule release. For example, they consider the ion channels on the transmitter membrane, like we have these ions, and these ion channels can help us release the molecule. So in this case, they also consider the permeability of the transmitter memory. Well, this we, we can see that for the transmitter modeling, we started from the very realistic, uh, sorry, the, the, the simplest and somehow a bit idealized model. And then we move to like more and more practical transmitter modeling. But then we know that um, there is there are some limitations about this modeling. For example, if we look at these transmitter models, the chemical reaction driven process in the molecular communication has not been addressed, which is one of the motivation for us to consider our memory fusion-based transmitter. And in terms of receiver modeling, again, let's start from the very, uh, like the, the very early receiver modeling. Um, so the basic receiver modeling, I guess, should be the transparent receiver. For the transparent receiver, we just assume that the receiver is transparent. So in this case, the molecules can enter and leave the receiver via free motion. And we know that the transparent modeling, uh, receiver modeling has been widely adopted in early molecular communication studies, and it serves as a good approximation when the molecules are very small and unchanged molecules. And after that, uh, I think some researchers, like including Yan Shang, has considered a fully absorbing receiver. But the fully absorbing receiver, like, like people have assumed that the receiver absorbs molecules as soon as the molecules hit the receiver's surface. And after that, people have considered the reactive receiver. Therefore, reactive receiver, it is assumed that the molecules reversibly react with the receptors on this receiver memory. So like the, the different kind of receptors are assumed to be existing at the receiver memory. And in this case, these uh, you know, receptors can form the ligand receptor complex molecules. So this is the reactive receiver. So by looking at this kind of studies, especially the studies focusing on the receiver with receptors, um, we know that uh, infinite number of receptors covering the entire receiver service, or if we can see a finite number of receivers uh, with like identical sizes, which are uniformly distributed over the services, these kind of assumptions, they are assumed in the literature. But if we try to consider this model a bit further, we can find that how about 
the system, if we have a receiver where the receptors may have different sizes and they can be, you know, in arbitrary locations, what can we do? So this is the motivation for us to investigate our receptor, uh, like our receiver model. So by looking at the literature, we can see that the transmitter and the modeling and the receiver modeling, like people started from the very simple model and then moved to more and more practical modeling. But at the same time, I mean, we try to, you know, relax the ideal life assumptions. We try to break the, the, the limitations, but there are always like limitations over there. And we, when we try to develop further transmit and receiver modeling, we need to, you know, break this, you know, uh, like the, 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 the existing limitations. And that is the basic motivation for our commun uh, molecular communication work. So in this case, to sum up, um, I would like to share two pieces of research works from my group. One research work is about the receiver, uh, sorry, the transmitter modeling, where we consider the memory fusion based transmitter. So these are the key contributions in this work. And for the second research work, we would like to consider a new receiver modeling, where we consider the receiver, which is covered by heterogeneous receptors. When we say heterogeneous receptors, we mean that these receptors can have arbitrary locations and can have, you know, uh, the, the, the different sizes. So these are the key contributions that I would like to share today. So let's start with the new transmitter model that we have considered, which is the memory fusion based transmitter. Why do we consider this memory fusion based transmitter? And it comes from nature, which in, in which we focus on a phenomenon which is called exocytosis. In nature, the exocytosis is a form of active transport where a cell transports molecules out of the cell by secreting them through an energy dependent process. So in this case, we can see that the, the exocytosis is performed by the memory fusion. So memory fusion is phenomenon. This exocytosis is performed by the memory fusion that fuses the vesicle within the cell memory and is common for the cell in the, you know, in, in the nature. So here is the illustration of this process. And in this case, when we consider this phenomenon, the memory fusion can be typically considered as a two-step process. The first step is called docking. For docking, it means that the V-snare proteins, uh, SV, so this V-snare, uh, like proteins, they are, you know, typically they are contained within the viscose and they, these viscose will move inside the transmitter and then, this transmitter, or like this viscose will move and move inside the transmitter, and then it will get close to the T-snare proteins. So in this case, um, in the first step, the docking stage, these, uh, these like V-snare proteins and the T-snare proteins, they will try to bind to each other and they will generate the trans-snare complexes. And then after finishing the first step, the second step is called fusion. For the fusion, it means that this generated trans-snare complex will catalyze the fusion of vesicular and the cell memory such that these uh, molecules that are previously stored within the viscose will be released outside the transmitted memory. So here we can see that for this kind of behavior, we try to use a two-step process to model that. So particu particularly, we consider the molecules, they are, kept, they are contained inside the viscose and this viscose will move and then you know bind bind to this uh, this T snare proteins, and then they will generate this trans snare complex, and such that this information molecule can be released. So there is a chemical reaction process that we want to consider and try to using this uh, like process to build up a more realistic transmitter model. So triggered by this uh, phenomenon. Um, in our system model, we consider a memory fusion-based transmitter and a fully absorbing receiver. We consider both transmitter and the receiver, they are spheres, they have their respective radius. And as we mentioned before, at the transmitter side, we consider the transmitter contains a lot of viscose and each viscose can store and transport eta molecules of type sigma. And then at time T0, we assume that an impulse of NV viscose where each viscose contains like eat, like eta molecules, this NV viscose is released from the center of the transmitter. And then after some time, these viscose are released, they are, they are diffusing randomly 
within the transmitter with a constant diffusion coefficient dv within transmitter. And then, as we mentioned, this viscose will keep moving, moving until they reach this transmitter memory or re reach this boundary of the transmitter. And then there is a memory fusion process. So in order to model this memory fusion process, we assume that the bonding between the, the V-snare proteins and the T-snare proteins is modeled as an irreversible reaction where we just model this reaction using this expression as V plus as T goes to the memory fusion. And once the memory fusion you know, is completed, it means that the transmitter is able to release the molecules. So in this case, we assume that the transmitter memory is fully covered by an infinite number of this ST, the T-snare proteins. And we also assume that the occupancy of the T-snare proteins by the V-snare proteins is ignored. And then we also know that the generation of this trans-snare complex guarantees the memory fusion. And after, after this memory fusion, then the molecules can be released from the transmitter. So the important challenge is that how we could model this kind of, you know, this chemical reaction process, um, starting from the generation of this viscose until the molecules, they are released by the transmitter at the boundary after the memory fusion process. So this is the key challenge that we tackle in this work. And how can we incorporate this process into this end-to-end -end molecular transmission? So that is the key contribution of this work. Apart from the assumptions that, that we just mentioned before, we also have some other assumptions. For example, once the molecules, they are released into the propagation environment, we assume that these molecules diffuse randomly with a constant diffusion coefficient. We also assume that the transmitter is transparent to the diffusion of the released molecules. That means once the molecules are released, they will not go back, like they will not go back and react with the transmitter. The transmitter is transparent. And then we also assume that the molecular degradation exists in the propagation environment. So based on this assumption, uh, we also consider a more advanced uh, like system model where we consider mobile transmitter and receiver. So in this, um, in this system, we also consider a single memory fusion-based transmitter. We also consider a fully absorbing receiver, but comparing to the previous model, and in this system model, we consider that the transmitter and the receiver, they can diffuse. They can diffuse in the environment. So in this case, we assume that in the mobile transmitter and receiver system model, we assume that the transmitter and the receiver, they diffuse randomly from time t0 and then from time t equals t prime, an impulse of the viscose is released from the center of the transmitter. So this is a, just like an advanced system model that we consider. And for both system model, we perform the performance analysis to analyze the received molecules at the receiver. Um, the key component in this analysis is the release probability at the transmitter. As we mentioned before, the, for the transmitter, it releases the viscose from the center and then the viscose propagate within the transmitter and there is a chemical process. So in this case, we first derive the release probability of molecules at the transmitter. And here it's just like a simple uh, like, like description about the our derivation. And if you want to see the more details, please feel free to look at our published papers. So here, um, in order to derive the release probability, we first denote this C as the viscose distribution. And then according to the fixed second law, we try to evaluate the diffusion of viscose inside the transmitter. And then based on the bonding between the two types of proteins, we define the boundary condition. And after some you know, performance evaluation and the mathematical calculation, we reach that the molecular release prob probability from the transmit memory is given by this result. So this is the first and key um, like fundamental result for our performance analysis. And then based on this molecule releasing probability, we have analyzed the end-to-end -end molecule heating probability at the static receiver. And this heating probability, if we consider a static transmitter and a static receiver, the heating probability can be written, can be obtained by this result. And if we try to take an integration of this probability, we are obtaining the end-to-end -end fraction of molecules absorbed at the static receiver. And as we mentioned before, we also consider the system between a mobile transmitter and a mobile receiver. And for this system, 
we derive the expected end-to-end -end molecule heating probability because in this scenario, we consider that the, um, like the transmitter and the receiver, for the transmitter and the receiver, if they are moving, then uh, we assume that they are, like the, 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 the probability that the molecule heats the receiver is considered as a stochastic process. So in this case, the end-to-end -end, the, the expected end-to-end -end molecule heating probability is given by this result. Again, here I just ignore the derivation details. I just provided the key results. And in terms of numerical results, first we can see the static transmitter and receiver. We can see that the simulation results match the analytical result. And if we consider the end-to-end -end heating probability, we find out that the peak of this heating probability decreases when Kf decreases because decreasing Kf means that the fusion probability between of these and the transmitter membrane decreases, and in this case, there are less molecules to be released. So the peak heating probability decreases. And then the peak of the heating probability increases when this dV increases, because increasing dV accelerates the movement of this cost. And we can see that if we look at the end-to-end -end number of molecule absorbed by the receiver, and if we consider a sufficiently long time, it seems like all molecules released from transmitter can be um, like can be um, like re like can be released from the transmitter if we can see the uh, sufficiently uh, long releasing period. And then if we can see the mobile transmitter and receiver, we can see the same or very similar observations on the end to end heating probability. And for this mobile case, if we try to increase T prime, which means we try to delay the time that the, the transmitter released the molecules, it decreases the end to end heating probability because a larger T prime means that the transmitter release this post after transmitter and the receiver have to choose for relatively longer time. So the distance between the transmitter and receiver becomes larger on average. And apart from that, we also consider the average beta rate result. For the average beta rate result, we can see the on-off team modulation and the threshold detector, and then we compare the result in static and the mobile scenario, and we evaluate the impact of the system parameter on the average beta rate. And then in the next maybe three or four minutes, I'm going to talk about the receiver modeling that we consider, which is the absorbing receiver with heterogeneous receptors. And we know that in biology, the living cells recognize the molecules through these like receptor link, uh, line guard interactions, which is fundamental for cells to communicate. And the previous studies consider, for example, the receptors of consider the Lingard uh, reaction, but they do not consider the case that when the receptors have different sizes and arbitrary locations. So the receptors with different sizes and arbitrary locations, that is something that we consider for this, uh, in this work. So for our work, uh, we consider like absorbing receiver with heterogeneous receptors, which means they have different locations, different sizes. And so in this case, we consider spherical receiver, we can see the a number of non-overlapping receptors on the receiver surface. And these receptors are modeled as absorbing patches. And the, each, the shape of each receptor is assumed as a circle, but with a different, you know, like different radius. And apart from that, we, for example, like we also denote the location of the APs. We consider that if the molecule is heat, like once a molecule heats the AP, it is absorbed by the like receiver. So um, for this receiver, like we first consider a point transmitter, and then we also replace the transmitter with a memory fusion transmitter that we just introduced before. And so for our second work, we consider this, these two system models, but the key result is that we consider the receiver with heterogeneous receptors. And for this case, we apply the boundary homo uh, homogenization to evaluate the expected molecule heating rate and the expected fraction of absorbed molecules by the receiver and the expected asymptotic fraction of absorbed molecules when the time goes to infinity. We, we just consider these three results and here are our analytical results. Again, I ignore know the analytic, uh, like the derivation details and they just show the key results here. And for the results, for the numerical results, we can see that if we can see the upon transmitter, we can see again the simulation results match the analytical results. And we also evaluate the impact of system parameters on the, the analytical results that we have considered. 
And if we consider the memory field chain based transmitter, again, we can show the accuracy of analysis, and we also make the same, same observation on the different performance metrics. And here is the comparison of different models. We just compare the performance of like a point transmitter with fully absorbing receiver, point transmitter with a AP based receiver considering our work, or a memory based transmitter with an AP based receiver. We see they have a different performance and this difference actually they are justified. So to conclude, uh, we, we, here are our key contributions. We consider a memory field transmission, a transmitter model in our first work, and then we consider um, the receiver covered by heterogeneous receptor in the second work. For the future research directions, if we consider transmitter modeling, we would like to further investigate the balance between the number of RS molecules and the received signals at the transmitter. For the receiver modeling, we want to optimize the spatial and area arrangement of receptors. And at the same time, we can we want to consider like the mix of you know different kinds of receptors at the transmitter and the, mo mo and the mobility of receptors on transmitter. And apart from that, if we try to extend the system from a single transmitter, single receiver to multiple transmitter, multiple receiver, I think it's worthwhile to be investigated. And if we can define, also can design some simulators, test bed, and perform experiments, that will be greatly help us to realize this result into the practice. So I'm sorry for I have used very long, like longer than what I thought. And here is my publications, and here is the reference. Uh, thank you very much. And also, I would like to thank my students and my collaborators, which are involved in this work. Thank you very much.